Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 101. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building for 101. Introduce yourself to the audience. Yo, I'm, um, my name is Country Boy. I'm from the uh, One Mike History Podcast. I basically chronicle Black history. Uh, you can find, you can reach out to me at on on IG at One Mike underscore History or on Twitter at One Mike History. I'm on all social media platforms. Copy that. Now let's hit the rundown. Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. That is my clothing line. We do custom jerseys, jackets, t-shirts, sweatsuits. And now we have the how to we have the sneaks in. The sneaks are in now. They are available in all colors. They go up to a 14 for you big footed fellas. And we also have the children's <laughs> size available. So we can get you all the way laced. I can get you head to toe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So you got no excuse not to be over there at Custom Hustle World making something happen. Or you can get one of these shirts. You know I'm saying the Hot Hustle Podcast for Hype shirts. These are also available. Those are at I Am Hype. Different situation uh, for the T-shirts. Um, H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. We do roofing, plumbing, HVAC, flooring, carpeting, cleanups, cleanouts. You name it, we can make it happen. That is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. If you make it worth my while, I will definitely slide. You did not tell the audience, though where you are from international hype is not just a hashtag it's where life <laughs> i was somebody talking to me right we we here i he assume yeah. i'm talking to him we got one yeah. guest on the yeah. hey, buddy, did it, just me no nah, I'm, um, <laughs> I'm from charlotte north carolina i was born and raised here i know it's a lot of transplants a lot of people moving moving to charlotte but yeah i'm i'm a local i'm a local local Copy that. See if he makes it worth my while. We'll slide down to Charlotte. We'll get his HVAC roofing, plumbing, carpet, yeah. cleaning. So I need, we'll I need all, all of that. that happen for him. <laughs> Copy that. Um, now, hit the rundown. E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock on the E-Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, 2 o'clock every Tuesday. This one is the new one. I need y'all to pay attention to. Now, Tuesdays, we are on two different situations. This is Hit Nation Empire. It is our heart station. You get in your car, you pull up your our heart, seven o'clock every Tuesday. You can find a how to host a podcast with I. Wednesday is 216 to blend. That is 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. They love me over there. They play me three times a day. Uh Friday, I say podcast radio network at 10 a.m. THC media at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Now, episode 101. I gotta go back to episode 100 last week. This is why I don't like to shout people out and start naming names, because then you're definitely forgetting people. And I didn't want to do that, which I did. And so, you know, y'all know I don't do like the pre-recorded notes and all of that type of thing. But how the hell did I forget my girls from What Up, though? What Up, though? I definitely got to give y'all a big shout out. Sports for you. Got to give y'all a big shout out. Two, um, also, the X-Squad Affiliates. X-Squad Affiliates and WTNUPhilly.com was the two stations that I started How to Hustle Podcast on. Before I even had a logo, a name, or any of that, those two stations told me when you get it together, hype, you can get it on our joints. So I definitely needed to shout them out. And the Kickback app, too. The Kickback app. I needed to shout them out out of Dallas. Shouts out to Ryan and Bree and all of them down there who bought me on the Kickback uh, before they had to, you know, disband the situation. So I don't like naming people because you don't forget people. I know I still forgot somebody anyway, but I needed to go back to episode 100 to make that happen. Now, episode 101. This one is titled Rebranded. When me and Country Boy met eons ago, yeah. he was on a podcast called The Cut. Right. I was on a podcast called OLF. And we would be back and forth all the time. Right. And now we come back and fast forward. This is maybe three years later where the situations are different. So we need you to talk about what led to you doing the rebrand from The Cut Ooh. to the black history situation that you are doing now, which uh big salute to you. I don't let everybody come on the podcast. I only let you come on it for fuck with what you're doing. And right. the information in them three minutes and four minute clips that you be having be some shit that be like, God damn, I never knew that. <laughs> or oh, this was some important shit. So definitely shouts out to you for putting an emphasis on that because we definitely, we, we, all of us need to make more of an emphasis on the history and things that we came from. My mom and dad was in a fucking 37 and 40 when I was born. So I had to 
have all those black history situations because I had two adults. Right. It was like you got to watch Rosewood Roots. Uh, Once upon a time, we were colored. You had to watch all of that shit because they lived through all of that yeah, type of, yeah. you know, the sixties and all of that. So for me, it hits different because it's just like being the kid back in the house and mom is telling me all about this shit. But definitely a big shout out to you though for filling that for filling that void that we definitely need. Yeah. Well. So. Wow, man, it feel like a million years ago. And we were still doing a cut at the time, but I was like, Yo, I got this idea for this uh, Black History Podcast. I remember it was this, God, what's the name? I can't remember. Dan Felton, yeah, it's a white guy. He used to do um, misinformation podcast, something like that. Anyway, one of, one of his episodes, he did the Tulsa, Tulsa Race Massacre. And I remember listening to it and thinking, Yo, this is, this is fire. I like this, but, <laughs> but, this need to be done by somebody of color. And no disrespect to him because, you know, there's 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 room enough in this podcasting space for all of us to to do and tell stories. But this need to be told by somebody, somebody black. These are these are our stories. And I was like, who better than me? I should do this. I should be trying, trying to do this, trying to talk about, you know, the stories of black people. At the time, I had a I mean, I, I enjoyed history. As a whole, I like Black history. I don't want to make it seem like I, you know, I was a historian at the time, or I went and got my PhD in African American studies. But I was like, I should do this, and then it turned something that was, you know, maybe a five or a six, up to a ten, <laughs> you know, because now that you're doing a podcast, you're like, oh, this is dope, this is dope, this is dope, and you get to the place where now I was like, oh man, you guys should hear about this. And oh yeah, have you heard this clip or this? Or you have you listened to this? It's really become a bit of a passion for me. The only issue is that people at people will ask me, and they be like, like country boy, um, how does this not make you constantly angry? How does this not like? How are you not constantly mad from all these stories? Because I know they're overly negative, and I was like, how do you know that I'm not? <laughs> how do you know that I'm not? How do you know I'm not mad right now? <laughs> <laughs> See what that situation is. One, I hated history class in school because it just wasn't stuff that I cared about. Mm -hmm. Stuff that's interesting to me is like you want to know the history of. Yeah. You needed to have a backstory. You want to do that type of homework and find all of this shit out about. It. Yeah. But if it's some shit that you just don't care about, then it's yeah. just like, oh my god, this whole shit again. Uh, and, and that's one how I thing live. That you talk about you know, no, no, yeah, the shit that you talking about. The shit that you talking about though, what that is. I mean, it's understanding that this is the story. This is how we got here. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so you hear about some of this shit, it was like, that's fucked up that they did that, but it's still how you got here. If right. you take one part of the story out, then it fucks up everything. And you take one thing out, then it doesn't lead to the way that things are. And the one that I want to say about Bruce's Beach, that's what I was just looking up because I couldn't find what, what the name of oh, it. Yeah, yeah, Bruce's yeah, yeah. Beach. I didn't know shit about that one. That one was crazy. I ain't told my mom about that one. Like, yo, did you know about this shit? <laughs> it's so many, and they talk about a lot of a lot of black communities got were either the government took them over, turned them in using eminent domain, turned them in the lakes, all these all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like in the story of Bruce's Beach, and I don't know why that resonated with me so much because. If you look at Seneca Village, Seneca Village was the same thing. That's how they, where they made Central Park from. Central Park was the area that Central, Seneca Village is the area that Central Park is in now. And they used the exact same idea of eminent domain. We were like, hey, we're going to take this from you and then we're going to turn it into a public park. So with Bruce's Beach, they take this, this, this land from these people and then don't turn it into a park for like three decades. They're like, hey, we're going to make this into a park and then don't do nothing with it. We just like, we just don't want you to be here. And that's that sentiment that they have the entire time where it's like, nah, cuz we want you to have nothing. Oh, it's looking real chocolate over here. Y'all got to get up out of here. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, no, nah, we can't have this. Nah. This is what they have been doing. This is what they always do to us. Because like I said this a couple of weeks ago on the episode is we don't want to see us succeed. So all we got to do is the little, little salt in the game and mm -hmm. we go for it every time, sadly enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but also now, so you had the passion for the topic. Mm -hmm. And you decided that this is the way that I want to go. Like I said, what leads you to get into, all right, the cut is over and now I'm just going full force into this. 
Because the so, cut, y'all was doing, you, y'all we were doing the, the, a podcast like y'all were doing a podcast like we all do, what we do the yeah, current events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, got those yeah, topics yeah. that we want to talk about. So, what led you to go from that to putting yourself in to becoming a niche mm-hmm. podcast? But it's a great niche. It is. It was twofold. One. Number one, and I and I still love it. I still love that roundtable discussion. And I want to try to find a way to to get back into that because I just like telling people my opinions. The the one of the big things about this particular niche is that I'm not telling my story, I'm telling our story or someone else's story or to collectively our story, but no one cares you know, my opinion in this, because the opinion, my opinion doesn't factor in this. It's just all about the facts and figures of things that happened during that particular time period. Yeah, Yeah, that particular time period. But when you're creating a podcast and you want to try to make something that A, people will listen to, and B, could possibly make you money, it's not about what you want. It's about giving people value, something that can like suck you in. Like you were saying, like I had never heard about Bruce's Beach. Now that I'm giving you something that you've never heard about, that's like, oh, well, this guy's giving me, he's giving me inherent value. My opinion, <laughs> unless you're super interesting, is not like no one wants, no one wants to hear that, not in mass. And, and and no one, you're not never as entertaining as you think you are. So at first you're like, man, we're going to make millions. And you get in here and we're a hundred episodes in. You're like, well, maybe we're not going to make millions. <laughs> so you start, I switched and started doing something else because I thought this would be the area that, I mean, I'm not going to be Joe Rogan, but I do make a nice, a, a, um, a nice side hustle out, out of this. That's already a passion for me. So I'm doing something that I enjoy. And I'm making money from this. And that was the idea going into this. Like, okay, hey, we're not going to make money from the cut. I mean, and the other part of that is, is that we were doing the pandemic. It was hard to get everybody together. We were doing episodes every single week. I burned, I burned them dudes out. (laughs) And I, we took a break. And and when I tried to wrangle them dudes back together again, life all these things were happening in their lives. It was hard to get them back together again. And I, my son, he was two. I mean, he's two now. He about to be three. Uh, he was just born. And I had that. Yeah, I remember. Too. And I remember that too. Uh, salute to you because I remember y'all had a whole lot of situations going on when you was trying to have your son. Yeah, me man. and you was having the kids at the same time. Right, Because right. again, this goes back, this goes right. back to we were we had been dealing with each other from for afar, while. but it, for, a while. <laughs> for a while. For a while. Because yeah. I remember y'all telling me, I remember very vividly that y'all telling me about the uh, 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 diaper genie, the little diaper genie. It's like, man, don't use that. Some trash bag, put that thing in the trash bag to that. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, somebody tried to get these cats back together again. I was tired. It was, you know, COVID was going on. We couldn't get together. We were doing stuff remote. The feeling wasn't the same. I was like, you know, I'm going to give him a break. I tried to get them back together again. It was like, ah, nah. And then now, man, they in the wind. Everybody in the wind. I text these dudes like, hey, man, what you got? What do you guys, what do you think about the idea of maybe getting back together, doing something real light? We're not going to do it a whole lot. You know, you know, a couple episodes. They're like crickets, crickets, crickets. Everybody got their own thing. They do it now. I couldn't, I couldn't get them back together even if I wanted to. <laughs> so. All right, so we're gonna put a pen. In, we're gonna put a pen in this because you said something that triggered something that's gonna go to something later. We call it a yeah. tease in the business. Okay, time I like myself. You know what I'm saying professionals, we can do that. Um, what got me for the rebrand? People have always asked me uh, if you knew me from being on OLF. OLF had about eight to ten of us on the show every mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like organized chaos, is what I would always call it. Cause that's just the niggas that's on the show. That's not the cameraman, the producer, the radio station, the six niggas that's on the couch, the niggas that's outside. It's a thousand of us there. And the way that I always describe this to people is it was just a business decision for me. Uh, Ultimately, I don't think we all looked at business the same way. Uh, When I was a kid in the morning, some kids got dressed with cartoons on. I got dressed with SportsCenter on because in my head, I always wanted to be on SportsCenter. Once you had Stuart Scott on there, He's using current day slang and he's got some song lyrics and all of that. It shows us, okay, that we can do that. Right. Then Stuart Scott and Martin, those are the two things that were my influences on that situation. Martin on the Martin show is doing a radio show. Right. And it's like, man, this is a TV show, but somebody's really getting paid 
to be on the radio show, to be on the radio, take phone calls, laugh, joke, and talk about all the shit that's going on in their life. That looks like it. Right. Like, right. you didn't know then in 1997 or 94 yeah. or nothing. Like that. That's a podcast. <laughs> yeah. But, once yeah. my brother calls me, once Boar calls me and says, like, yo, let's do a podcast, I'm like, all right, that's not a bad idea. And as you can see with me, I'm a b- jump in with both feet, both arms and everything. I'm all the way in if I'm in. Right. I can't be half in. I can't half do stuff. Right. If I'm doing it, I'm an extremist. We're going on entirely too hard. Like, you seem like I said, that. yeah, I, re- I tell people all the time, I remember I pay attention to everything. Right. And certain things, like I said, when I first saw y'all logo from the cut, I'm like, it's four niggas sitting at the table. That's exactly how we started. So when I see your logo, I instantly go, I don't even know who these niggas is, but this is exactly how we started. We started before yeah. them. I want to give you anything that I can to help you in this situation because right. I know how hard this shit is going to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, like you said, you go to fast forward to the shutdown. And like I, we talked, we was, we was having kids. My wife was pregnant. Right. I didn't come right. back out the house until May of last year, 22. Right. Because wife is pregnant and a nurse. I'm working. We both essential workers. We at work every day. And just can't be around niggas. Like I said, it's too many of us to know where everybody's been and what they've been doing. So we did the remote thing. And like I said, things just didn't work out. Those are still my brothers since the day I was born. Right. And you ain't never going to catch me saying a bad thing about nobody. It's just a business situation. Right. Uh, but the first time that uh, the wristbands, I got the wristbands, the OLF wristbands, and I sold yeah, two I of them. My cousin. I remember them. I remember two them. Of them. Oh, yeah, then we got the How to Hustle wristbands. We have them available in gray and black, and we have them available in the yellow and white. I mean, the green and white, excuse me. Uh, um, new joints coming too. Uh, free with any purchase from Custom Hustle World. Um, <laughs> me selling my cousin two wristbands, and he gives me $4, changed everything. Because at that point, you showed me that I can monetize this situation. Mm-hmm. This is something that is like topics that we're going to talk about. I will always tell people, it's like, why is Hank melting cheese on a sandwich? Somebody's tuning in to find out every week why. Because it right. doesn't matter what the topic is that we're talking about. They're tuning in because it's you. Right. They want the shirts. They want the merchandise because yeah. it's you. Mm-hmm. And for me, that meant we now need to have this thing treating it like it's real, treating it like it's a business. And everybody doesn't look at it like that. Some right. people, like you were saying, some people just want to come get their opinion and go on. Yeah. Because they got whatever else going on. And some people right. don't see the vision. Everybody doesn't get it. Right. Everybody can't go. It's the right. one thing that you always have to understand is everybody cannot go. You cannot right. save everybody. That right. was always my problem. I'm trying to bring us all. Yeah. And it's like, if you don't want to go, look, I'll see you when I get back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to that point, when you start making money, it's like a group. You know, like TLC or Drew Hill, we start making money. Are we splitting this four ways? Am I splitting this three ways? That was another one that I threw out. Like (laughs) I said, I don't. I said this to the group because, like I said, there's so many of us. Right. When I get us to the point of making money, if I get us to the point where we can get a thousand dollars a week, call it just give round numbers, and it's ten of us, and we all haven't put in equal work, should we all get a hundred dollars? Because I don't think we should. Because like I said, I know that I know what I'm doing and we all know what I'm doing. Right. Why are we all getting an equal pay? There's no job in the world where the pay is equal. Mm-hmm. The person who is more valuable gets the most. Like, right. right. LeBron and uh, D'Angelo Russell ain't making the same amount of money. Right. <laughs> Steph and James Wiseman wasn't making the same amount of money. <laughs> like, right. Right. There are, right. Levels, <laughs> there are levels to the value that you have to the situation. Right. And if we don't all see it like that, then we don't need to argue. We don't need to cuss each other out. We don't need to be immature about the situation. We can just agree to disagree and still all love and go our separate ways. Uh, so that's how I got to the situation of the rebrand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to have quick conversations with interesting people and lead a guest want lead the audience want more. Yeah. I want them always to say, well, damn, you could have just went here, there, or wherever about the topic or whatever, and to say, yeah, but that's how I get you next week, and in three weeks, and in six months, and in six yeah. years. Yeah. Like, yeah. If we give it all to you today, what we doing tomorrow? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's that's a great point. I, one of the things I do I do enjoy is people who understand the importance of not overstaying your welcome and getting in and getting out. Like, hey, I know you enjoy this. But we're not, we here for a good time, not a long time. And we're going to get up out of here. And as soon as you think like, oh man, this is getting good. Boop. Nah, it's over fam. Sorry. (laughs) 
this is one thing that you said too. This was two pins that I had for you. Now pull, let's pull this pin now. We all think our conversations are interesting because we're in them. Mm-hmm. We all think we're interesting. Everybody is a group of four people in every city, state, and country that says, man, we could do a podcast about this because we got these three things that we always talk about. We got sports. If we get a group of guys, we got sports. We got raising our kids. And we got relationships that we can always talk to each other about. And we're going to tell these stories with the inside jokes that are funny to us. Great. That means we got six or seven episodes. What are we doing for episodes 10, 12, 13, 14, 15? And that's the part that you have to have figured out already. That's right. the part that that's set, what separates. Is this a hobby or is this a business? <laughs> like, right. Plenty of people. How many people have you seen where you see a page and you go, oh, damn, what happened to them? Oh, damn, I forgot all about them. I listened to their first three episodes and it was yeah. cool. And yeah, that was on. funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how that happens, though, if, if you ain't if you don't have that mindset. And I don't. And, and, you know, like I said, I still miss it. I still enjoy doing those things when I get invited like this, where I get to talk about something other than black history, because I've gotten to the point where no one invites me on their show to do anything else other than talk about black history. You know, I'm like, yo, I have other pursuits. I have other things that I enjoy. You know, send the PlayStation right back there. We could talk about video games all day. You know what I'm saying? So I still enjoy giving people my opinion, but I understand this, pl- this podcasting platform and, and 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 you touched on it, you know, a lot. Like you got to give people value. You have to keep people wanting more. You have to get something something other than than my opinion, unless you know I'm, you know, Martin or a comedian or somebody that can get tickled. <laughs> I ain't See, pretty this enough. <laughs> this is something else. This is something else that you just touched on, and this is one of the things that I always do. Like I said, I don't bring people on who I don't fuck with. And right. if I know you're talking black history on your show, copy. We're never talking history when I bring you yeah. on. Right. Your audience is going to get that from you every time they tune in. What mm-hmm. I want your audience to do is say, damn, I didn't know that about him. Right. Because right. something that I threw at you that you didn't, I love that this is the difference in, again, this is maturity in these situations. When I said you found a niche, some people hear niche and they get offended. Right. Now right. you that's the immaturity though if you hear niche and are offended. I have a I found a niche for myself too. This is what I always used to put in that group three years ago. You yeah. find a lane and dominate it. Okay. Absolutely. This is my, this is my lane. The 30 minute, I want to have you in, out, quick discussions, and we can bring you back to talk about those other 12 right. things that we had on the table. Right. But this is the niche that I'm finding, and this is the lane that I'm gonna dominate. Right. And that is my whole thing. You have to find something in there that makes you different and you got to make sure that nobody's doing it the way that you're going to do it. Because I know I tell people all the time, you need me. I might need you, but you damn sure need me. Yeah. Because I'm the catch. (laughs) Yeah. Man, that that, the whole thing about about niching down, and that was super, super important for me because when I started getting into this space, I started listening to a lot of you know, the white podcasters to just see what they were doing. What are you, what are you doing? And one of the first thing they told me was like, Hey, the, the, the riches is in the niches. That's the first, that's the first thing they told me was the riches was in the niches. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's interesting. What do you, you know, what do you, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Cause he was like, here's the thing. If I listen to you and I talk to you today and then you have a, a, a topic that's super interesting. I love this topic. When I come on next week and you're talking about sports and I don't like basketball, I'm not going to keep listening to this. I was here for last week when you were talking about, you know, black history or PlayStation or whatever it was on that particular episode. So to get to, to the, to really build a base, a base that can make you money. You don't need everybody. You need fanatical supporters. And those are the people that get that, 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 that will stick by you through thick and thin and will make you money. <laughs> That's what you want. You want the money. <laughs> I would rather have a hundred, this is why whenever they hit you with those, you can buy X amount of followers. I'd rather have a hundred followers that's listening to this show and locked in with the situation than a hundred thousand followers and you getting 12 likes on the photo because something about these numbers doesn't equate. Yeah, um, absolutely. Now, since you brought it up, now we dive this part of the top, this part of the discussion into you and what you got going on with the situation. This is something that we threw out there, How to Hustle Seminars, you know. Those can still be purchased. DM me and you can get those links. Five-part series. You can buy them one at a time and you can get all five. Um, how you make money off this situation? Oh, what man. is it that you're doing to make money off of your podcast? 
I I have a YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is monetized. It's up to about I just crossed five thousand subscribers. I make anywhere. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lay out for the applause. Let's not Sorry. gloss over. <laughs> Let's not gloss over. Let's not gloss over any accomplishments that we have. No, we no. And, and nobody say is, yeah, I got a little, uh-uh, because they ain't shit little about how to hustle. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, YouTube, you know, you, you, you was on there. YouTube tough. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube is rough. And when I was doing the cut, I had 25 subscribers. <laughs> it mm -hmm. wasn't until I started doing the Black History thing that it started to, that I started to gain some traction. And I make about... Depending on the month, anywhere you from ain't 80. Gotta, you, wait, wait, wait. You ain't got to throw out. You ain't got to throw out no numbers on which. Right, it's, 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 it's okay. It ain't, that's a, it ain't too crazy, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I also make money from from t shirts. I sell t shirts on T Public. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to be. I don't got no press. I don't have any of that stuff. I realize the T Public is taking a massive cut. They're taking like eighty percent. But on the flip side of that, I'm also doing nothing. All I do is upload a picture. <laughs> And then sell T-shirts. And that is a, when I tell you T-Public is the easiest hustle I, between me and you and, you and your listeners, I don't even own the pictures. They, if they take the picture down, they're like, oh, man, that's a copyright. I don't care. I'll, I'll <laughs> vote two more tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? See if these get taken down. If they don't, they don't. But the money, but the ones that don't, they make me consistent money every single month. It's easy. I don't do nothing. I don't do nothing. So that right there, <laughs> them two right there, super easy hustle. I have Patreon subscribers, they that pledge that I don't even, I, I'm not even offering them anything. I just like, hey, you like the podcast, you like what I'm doing, just support me with a little bit of money, two dollars, five dollars. I'm not tripping. Whatever you got, I'm cool with that. I put out a anything newsletter. Is, anything is anything. A plus. Yeah. I have a newsletter. The newsletter will allow you to have subscribers. People will pledge just for the newsletter. You know what I'm saying? They, that's two, four, eight dollars. It don't matter. Like whatever you give me, that stuff add up. I'm just here trying to make a little bit of money, and it does require me some work. And if you want me to continue to keep doing this, pay me for my efforts. <laughs> that's all I'm asking. Even if it's nothing, even if it's like you know a dollar, I'm not gonna stop you from giving me a dollar. So yeah, those are the big, those are the major hustles. But the, but the t-shirts the make me more than anything. I got one thing in here that I wanted to throw in. This is for people who got us with live show, March the 12th. Uh, this will be a giveaway right here. I wanted to randomly throw it into the episode. This tells me if you're really listening or not. First person who comments under the picture with the hashtag H2H Live gets a free ticket to the How to Hustle Live show, March the 12th. Um, that wasn't the gloss over what you were saying. That was just to randomly throw that in there. This is how you know who's listening and who's not. Now, uh, how you make money is always very important because like you said, the man told you find a niche and the niche is where the money is because we all think we're important. We all right. think these conversations are great and you have to find something that makes you stand out that makes you different and that makes you money as you right. said. And rather it be, like I said, $4 changed my whole perspective. $4 mm -hmm. wasn't going to be able to buy me a sandwich that night, but $4 mm -hmm. changed my thought process mm -hmm. as far as how this business worked. Now, this is a new thing that we're doing on the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Before we close out the show, we will put Hype on the hot seat. We will go to the guest, which will be Country Boy this week, and he's going to give me two randoms because I'm paid talent, a professional like myself. Uh -huh. I can be here to answer anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you, man. How do you, how, how, how do you make money from this, man? How, what, 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 what's making you money with the podcast and what you're doing? How to Hustle Enterprise is how I make money. Me starting my podcast led to me doing my clothing line and my cleaning company. So me cleaning at somebody's house leads to them subscribing to the podcast and them down telling me, well, damn, I didn't know you thought this about that. Or, Yo, I listened to that episode and that was good. Or doing an episode with somebody leads to me cleaning something for them or leads to, damn, I need a jacket, I need a jersey uh, or any of those different situations. So for me, it all kind of ties in together. Uh, it all starts, like I said, with a couple of wristbands, but now I throw the wristband in the bag and now the money that I'm paying for the wristbands are made back off of a purchase of a couple of sweatsuits, a couple of jackets and all of that. Now the money's made already. So now the rest of it, I can't just give them away because sometimes it's not even about the, uh, it's not about the money. It's about the exposure. Right. It's about somebody in 
This is why I made them green and white because I want people to think about, damn, I was in Philly days, the Eagles. I only like the Eagles. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I want you to be like, damn, that's a Philly thing. Yeah. So when you see the green and white, oh, damn, what's that? It's something that stands out. It's something that makes you different. And those are the things that make you make you not even just the money. It makes you a presence. It makes you something that somebody's going, yo, what's that? And how come I don't know about it? Yeah, that's genius. That's genius. And I'll be honest with you, the, the, the thing that I'm impressed with the most is you were able to tie two things together that don't seem like they would go together, like the cleaning company and the podcast and to make it like work together. Like, mm-hmm. like I would have never, I never I started the that. clothing line and the cleaning company like the same week, like Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> So when I start when I start hitting niggas, it's like, damn, how many pages you got? Like, I got four Instagrams and two Twitters. So, you know, and I just got back on Facebook. I'm kind of busy. Yeah. Even though I don't like <laughs> Facebook. I'm not a huge Facebook fan. Either. I'm not neither. They stole my original page. They got all the pictures of my, my oldest daughter on there. I'm a little salty about that. But you know, it is what it is. It's one person that's only on Facebook. And like I always tell people, if they only on Facebook, then that's where I got to meet them at. Yeah, you meet yeah. somebody where they at. If that's where yeah. you at, then that's where I need to go this, to get that one extra. And this is this is why I'm on like every social media platform because I'm trying to be where all the eyeballs are. Anywhere I can advertise to you to tell you about my platform, this is where I'm going to be. <laughs> it's where mm-hmm. I'm going to be, and that's where I need to be. So, what's the what's the future hold for for you? What do you what what do you what do you want from this? What are your dreams and aspirations for this? What do you what, what do you want tomorrow to bring? Weekly, uh, daily spot. Give me the daily seven to nine. Give me the daily eight to ten. Whatever that time slot might be, six to ten is like the premium spot for a radio situation. I'm not looking to do six to ten because that means you're probably up at like three thirty. Not yeah. what I'm looking to do. So <laughs> you hit me with the afternoon drive, and I can get you home. Uh, that would be like the goal. If you couldn't do afternoon drive for radio, then you get like a you get a stream, a streaming service. I don't even want to throw nobody's name out there because we don't give out no free publicity for nobody. <laughs> um, publicity's paid. I mean, you ads are paid for, not given. Right. Um, <laughs> Shouts out to Champion and Shea Catering, one of my sponsors for the Hot Hustle Live show. But yeah, that would be like it. To have a presence on a daily Monday through Friday situation where I get to give you all of the Hot Hustle Empire. Because if you one thing about me, I'm, a t- I'm tying everything into everything. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love it. I don't even think I I don't have that that kind of vision to tie things together (laughs) like that. But once you be get to where we are, you are paid talent. Yeah. Okay. Makes you a professional. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) So don't sell yourself short. You have it in you. You just ain't pulled it out of yourself yet. Now, country boy, I appreciate you coming on. We've been making we've been making this one happen for three fucking years. Yeah, because like yeah. I said, we've been talking since the the, the, the wives were pregnant. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you coming on. That was episode one hundred and one. Don't forget, there's a secret in this episode. You're the first person that puts the comment under uh, the photo of episode one hundred and one. You win a free ticket to the Hot Hustle Live show. Appreciate you coming on, bro. That was episode one hundred and one. We are out. Feel it, feel it.